In this clip, we'll look at the three types of investigation designs in the VCE study design. We'll touch on when they would be appropriate for use. And we'll also do a basic evaluation of the pros and the cons of each. So if, in terms of where this fits in with the big picture of scientific methodology, if we were to design and implement our own research investigation, step one is we need to come up with an idea. And then we get to stage two, where we need to basically design our methodology. And so therefore we're going to think about our sampling and we're going to look at what type of investigation design we're going to use for practical purposes so that we can generate data, analyze data, and draw conclusions and publish our findings. So what do we mean by a research investigation design? Well, as we've got here, it's basically the framework that we utilize to expose our sample of participants to a experimental condition and or a control condition, depending on which type of research investigation design we pick. So as stated earlier, we have three options in the VCE course. We have number one, the between subjects design, where we have a sample of participants. Ideally, they will be randomly allocated to either a control condition, so a group of participants that are not exposed to the IV, and then the other half will be randomly allocated to the experimental condition they will be exposed to the IV. So the advantage of this approach, as opposed to the two alternatives that we'll explore shortly, is this process is more um, time and cost effective. It can generally be done in about half the time. We'll have a lower rate of attrition, possibly no attrition if it's an experiment done um, in say one afternoon. And it is easier to control placebo effects because if we use deception ethically, um, then potentially the participants that are in the two groups will have the same set of expectations before we debrief them at the end of the procedure. The limitation is that we will have no control or very limited control over participant related variables. So for instance, if we were doing a study on memory, um, our group in, in treatment A might have a much lower short-term memory capacity than our participants in treatment B. So that could have a, count, a confounding impact on our dependent variable. And potentially we'll need double the amount of participants than we would within a within subjects design. The second option that I'll talk about is the within subjects design, where we have our sample of participants and this time, they're exposed to all experimental slash control conditions. So the advantage of that is that the participant related variables that we were talking about in the um, between subjects design have been controlled. We don't have to worry about a inferior memory for the participants in treatment A versus treatment B because the same participants are basically being exposed to all levels of treatment. The problem with this is that if the expectations vary between the two treatments, then this can have a confounding effect on our results. It's also potentially going to take twice as long to conduct the experiment, and so there will be a cost effect. And if we need to do the study over, um, say, two afternoons or two weeks or two periods um, over an extended stretch, then we're going to have a higher dropout rate. More participants are going to drop out and that's going to mess um, with the reproducibility of the data that we generate. A mixed design is where we use a combination of the two previously mentioned between subjects and within subjects. So here's an idea I'd like to actually implement for an experiment. Let's, let's get a group of students who are learning in the classroom face to face and let's get a, a group of students that are learning remotely so there are two groups let's uh, what i'd like to do is investigate uh, how effective say some mindfulness meditation is in 
basically enhancing the attentiveness of students during the lesson. And then we can maybe later on test the, the power of exercise just prior to that lesson. So if we look at the little chart down the bottom here, we've got our group one, they can be, let's say our remote um, students and then group two is our face-to-face. -face. We give them a, a pretest just so that we've got some comparability in terms of their level of understanding of the course thus far. And then um, one group, the, the remote students, we get them to do a couple of minutes of mindfulness meditation and then we teach them content and we test them. Group two, they're learning face to face. We get them to do to exercise for a couple of minutes before a lesson. So maybe just some power walking uh, along the hallway, etc., just to get the um, adrenaline flowing, etc. And then we test them and see how they go. All right, and then we flip those two on the, on the next lesson. So the remote students, they're doing a bit of exercise uh, at home, obviously. And then our face-to-face, -face, they're doing some mindfulness meditation guided by the teacher, and then we test them. So if we use this approach, um, it's an effective way of, of testing multiple variables. So we're testing not only uh, comparison between remote learners and face-to-face -face learners, but we're also seeing the impact of mindfulness meditation and exercise and seeing if if they vary in terms of improving the, the attentiveness of students during class, um, and if there's a variation on whether they're face-to-face -face or remote. Now, the limitation with that is similar to what we just talked about with the um, within subjects, we might have expectations that could vary um, across those two conditions. Um, it is gonna have to mean we're gonna have to burn two lessons and what if we have some students who are away on that second lesson so again that's going to mess um, with the consistency and, and the validity of our data